let, let's set the scene a little bit, um, you know, very briefly, um, the time period in which he is born, um, some of the formative stages, which you outline in, in great detail um, in, in the book, and maybe perhaps just highlight some of the significant influences on his life that led him through this um, career, which really spanned so many decades and so many different endeavors. All right. So Dr. Seuss is born in 1904 and dies in 1992, I believe. So he lived almost the entirety of the 20th century. Um, he is not one of these guys who early on you're, you're, you know, as I would say, this isn't Steven Spielberg filming his trains crashing into each other. You wouldn't necessarily know what he wanted to do with his life, re, you know, looking at him as a child. Um, he wasn't a child prodigy. He wasn't a, a great artist as a child. You see his work in high school. It's nothing outstanding. It looks uh, like the work I did as a high school newspaper artist, frankly. Um, and he really thinks that he's going to be an English teacher. And he's not a great student in high school, ends up at Dartmouth. He's not a fantastic student at Dartmouth and ends up going to Oxford, mainly because he had lied and told his father he'd won a scholarship and he hadn't. Um, and then his father, who had already told the newspaper reporter across the street, then had to had to send him to Oxford uh, to, to to cover it up. <laughs> so so Seuss ends up at at and Ted Guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call him Seuss, but Seuss ends up at Oxford uh, to become a college professor, and ends up um, you know spending most of his notebooks drawing rather than studying and the woman he would eventually marry who was a fellow student was looking through his notebook and said you know that's what you should be doing you should be drawing but what Seuss does when he first starts out is he's drawing for humor magazines like the 1920 equivalent of mad magazine and that's where he begins to sort of cut his teeth and do his early work Lux into, and we can talk about this in more in depth if you would like, but sort of Lux into a fantastic advertising job selling a uh, flip bug spray for Standard Oil and a very successful career. He was sort of the Don Draper of his era um, for about 17 years. He's being paid very well by Standard Oil through uh, the, his advertising company. And that was really his main career for a long time. He didn't get into children's books initially because he felt he had something to say to children. That certainly happens later, but he gets into children's books because there was money on the table. Um, it was something he was not precluded from doing through his sort of limited contract he had with Standard Oil. So he could write and draw children's books and wrote and drew his first children's book that was published in 1937, which was And to Think That I Saw on Mulberry Street. But as incredible as it sounds to us nowadays, Dr. Seuss's early books on up into even the early 1940s, he had about seven of them before World War II started, didn't really generate enough money for him to make a living by it. So he was still doing advertising work that entire time. Ends up enlisting in the army at age 39 to serve in World War II. And this is sort of one of the first big formative eras for him. He meets two really important people in his story. His commanding officer in the Army Signal Corps, so he's, he's hired in the Army Signal Corps to do propaganda and training films, uh, so he's stationed in California, but his commanding officer is Frank Capra, the movie director, mm -hmm. who understands how valuable um, Seuss is as a storyteller, and, but teaches him uh, something very key, which is he began going through Seuss's scripts for the training films and the propaganda films and said, I'm going to underline your, your plot in blue pencil in here. And if I hand this back to you and there's no blue pencil, you have a real problem. Uh, and so Capra teaches him about tight storytelling and about how making words matter, making words count, but pairs him up with another really formative colleague at the time, a young animator named Chuck Jones, who was a civilian, not in the army, but a civilian working at Warner Brothers, who pairs him uh, with Chuck Jones to do the private snafu training films. And they're hilarious. They belong to the American public. You can see them at the National Archives. They're free to watch or download, even if you'd like. Um, but Chuck Jones is one who teaches him how to storyboard a story and how to put the high points of the story down on paper and then pin them to the wall. And Seuss absolutely loved this. It taught him about pacing. Um, it permitted him to pin a book up on the wall and stare at it for a year, sometimes years, and move pages around and determine where the best points in the story were. So that's a very formative experience in his life is, is meeting Chuck Jones and Frank Capra. 